Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we're set for our second or first uh, major conversation this morning, uh, looking at democracy uh, under threat in certain parts of the country by uh, governors of our states. And we'll start uh, by giving you uh, a background. Well, the River State House of Assembly on Monday uh, passed uh, the Advertisement and Use of State-Owned Properties Prohibition Bill 2022. Uh, the House passed the bill shortly after a public hearing was held on the bill with various stakeholders, including civil society organizations and the security agencies uh, in River State or from River State in attendance. Now, the Public Hearing Committee had recommended in its report that the bill be passed. The bill was sponsored by the leader of the River State House of Assembly and member representing Obiapo uh, Constituency 1, Martin Amehuli. Now, the bill seeks to prohibit the use of, of, of residential buildings for non-residential purposes, prohibit outdoor advertisements, particularly the posting of bills, posters, and other materials, and the use of state-owned institutions or public schools for political campaigns. The bill stipulates a fine of 3 million 200,000 naira and 400,000 naira for the contravention of various sections of the law. Now, Governor Yesson Wiki of River State had earlier uh, banned, before this uh, had earlier last month, banned the use of premises, buildings, and sundry structures in residential areas as campaign offices uh, by political parties in River State without the approval of the state government. That took effect from uh, November 11, 2022. He called it Executive Order 22, uh, which is signed in Port Hackett, and he said the condition for political campaigns, uh, which also prohibits posting of bills, posters, or related materials in unauthorized places, is intended to back the enforcement of the River State Outdoor uh, Signage and Advertisement Law. Um, now, he before this Executive Order 22, the governor of River State had Earlier, sign executive order, executive order 21, a legal instrument that forces political parties in River State to fulfill certain conditions before embarking on campaign in various parts of the state. Now, according to that executive order 21 signed by uh, Governor Yeson Wiki, political parties are prohibited uh, from using public schools for political campaigns without the approval of the state. A ministry of, educa of Education. It also added that the, an application uh, for approval must be submitted to the state government at least two weeks before the date of campaign. Right? And he also said applicants will also be made to deposit uh, the sum of five million naira. He called these caution fees five million naira in case attendees destroy uh, facilities at the school. He actually also said the local government chairman were given the power and had the right to stop any political rally, a campaign rally, if government approval uh, is not sought. Now, some days ago, the Nigeria police force came out through the inspector general police to caution um, uh, against so governors, state governors in Nigeria, against stopping opposition political parties from holding their electionary campaigns in their state. The deputy inspector general police in charge of operations, uh, Daundaura Mustafa uh, made this known at the political party summit in Abuja. He represented the IG uh, Usman Al Kalibaba at that event. And he said that the police commissioners in the states across Nigeria had been directed to ensure that all, all political parties were given free space and the freedom to campaign in states. They are given the free space and the freedom to campaign in states while saying that the police had received several complaints, several complaints of attacks on political parties in states uh, during uh, campaigns. However, saying some governors deserve commendation for demonstrating political tolerance while others deserve condemnation uh, for their attitude. And we have uh, joining us via Zoom from River State, uh, two guests uh, who do justice uh, to this uh, topic. I'll start with the first one, and of course, I'm talking about uh, Openabo Inkotaria. He is a public affairs analyst, uh, usual on our Of the Press segment every week, right here. And comrade Solomon Lenu. Solomon Lenu is a spokesman for the River State Civil Society Organizations, Rift School. Gentlemen, good morning, and thank you very much for your time. Oh, good morning. All right. Uh, I'll start with you, Openabo Inkotaria. What are your thoughts on um, this new. <laughs> This new uh, uh, bill passed by the River State House 
uh, of assembly, it seems that uh, finally the executive orders have been somewhat given uh, a legal backing, uh, which now makes it law that the parties in River State cannot break. Yes, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Solomon. I would have been dazed if the River State House of Assembly had done anything to the contract. I have always referred to the State House of Assembly as Ministry of Lawmaking, not necessarily State House of Assembly. Ministry of Lawmaking attached to the executive arm of government. Like uh, Solomon rightly said before we actually came on air, the Good Friday might be on the throne for a day, but must definitely give way to the drums, beats, and trumpets of Easter Sunday. Copy what we have in, in River State, as to speak. I've always said this. It's a match of conquest, terror, and subjugation. You see, there can never be a crueler tyranny than that perpetrated under the shield of the law. The uh, electoral acts and you also have the Constitution that is a, a, that has spelled out how elections can be conducted, the procedures and the paradigm. Therefore, any other law that is inconsistent with the electoral act, there is a hitch there, there is a hitch. After the, uh, at the end of the E, Taria, a H. Any other law that is inconsistent with the electoral act and is ultra virus the Constitution, to the extent of that inconsistency, is null and void. Governor Yosan Wiki, being a lawyer, is seized of these facts. And that is why, like in every other instance, has decided to invoke the powers of the House of Assembly to make it a law in River State. I said, like in every other instance, he went to court to hamstring the opposition from campaigning. He said, like the APC and so on, that the candidates were not qualified eligible. And the Supreme Court, the Court of the Court, sorry, the High Court, the uh, Court of Appeal, has referred to the PDP as a meddlesome interloper because it's an intra party matter, and therefore no other party can question the conduct of the primaries or how their candidates emerged. Therefore, Yosem is the one we can we'll stop at nothing, we'll resort to various expedients legal and illegal, legitimate and illegitimate, to frustrate the opposition parties. Let us take under advisement the executive at 21 and 22. You will agree with me that the IG, including the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, have all come out to say no state governor can scuttle, frustrate the campaigns of the opposition. What does that mean? In very clear terms, everybody must play by the rule. And the rule is as spelled out by the Electoral Act and as spelled out by the Constitution. When you say we must give a state two weeks' notice before you go ahead to campaign, the government has no such powers. Because the electoral law says give INEC 10 days notice for INEC to sort out whatever burning issues that may arise. If, for example, you want to take primary school, and hypothetically, I'm not there. Okay, let's say for another primary school. That was my school, my primary school. If, for example, you want to take for another primary school as your campaign ground, all you need to do is inform INEC 10 days to the time. 
And it is incumbent on INEC to smoothen out whatever rash there are. If any other party had used that place, if that place is encumbered on that day, it is the duty, the responsibility of INEC to smoothen that out. And INEC will come back to him to say, no, you can't use that place because it has been booked or you can use it because it is free. I must not write to a school principal, write to a school headmaster, seeking in premature for the use of that particular place. I tell you why. We all know that in River State, first and foremost, let me make it clear that the governor, yes, I'm going had voted on various occasions that he's going to frustrate the campaign of the opposition parties and most especially frustrate the campaign of Atiku Abubakar in River State. Not once, not twice. He didn't mention it. But when he was pouring bias of uh, vitriol on the Yoshayu and on those he perceived as enemies, I'm talking about the likes of Omeya, Austin Opera, Lee Neva, and B.S. and Co. He said, let me see how they will come to River State to campaign. He went a step further to say, let me also see how the opposition parties in River State will campaign. That was how he commenced the frivolous legal proceedings against the opposition parties that have all failed. All right, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Butara, we, we have to we have to bring in Solomon at this point, please. Uh, uh, we've heard. Oh, yeah, all you've said. Yeah, because of time. Yeah, because of time. Yeah, because of time. You know, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'm sorry. I, I can see how how worried you are about the situation as a as a reverse indigen. Um, who is also a, a public affairs commentator, it's, it seems it's a really, really big, serious situation. Now, Solomon, you, you are of civil no, society. It's a threat to democracy. So we have to, it's a threat to democracy. All right, so Solomon. I want to go into the reasons. Yes, I'll reasons. come back to you. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you so that we don't end. Yes, so we don't end without Solomon saying things. Solomon, um, uh, you are of civil society. Um, you're not a politician. Um, uh, governor Wiki is is is, uh, is is seen, you know, as a very forward-thinking governor. Um, you know, love Nigerians like him. He is called Mr. Project. He has uh, a track record of of building lots of projects, infrastructure projects, delivering in River State, and um, he's earned the admiration of of a lot of people around Nigeria. In fact, his doggedness, insisting that you know he must stand, you know, for the so south. You see, so you yeah. See. So so so, so I want to come to you, uh, Solomon. How do you know, the people in River State, um, the civilians, civil society, how are they perceiving this new, uh, uh, these executive orders and these laws that are being passed, you know, regarding voting, sorry, regarding the uh, campaigning, uh, uh, political or campaign advertising, you know, and the uh, inciting of campaign offices and residential areas. How are, how are civil society and then the public generally receiving these? Well, uh, thank you, Kofi, for you know, giving us this uh, opportunity to actually talk to Nigerians about what is happening in River State today. Unfortunately, what is happening in River State today didn't just start now. But then, you know, uh, we were thinking that um, as time progresses, maybe, you know, it is as is expected of a uh, human being to make progress in everything that we do, that probably, you know, we will move from where we have always been, in the, in the trenches to where we had always been, with regards to our democracy since uh, this administration came to be, you know, to get to a better place. You know, but unfortunately, what we have seen and what we continue to see is a decline of democracy, a decline of democratic practices, you know, on daily basis in River State. And I also want to use this opportunity to say that Nigerians don't really know what is happening in River State because if they do, I think that uh, both uh, the, the federal government and the security agencies, you know, we actually handle the issue of River State differently from what, from how they are they are handling it today. And I say this because, uh, like you you said, the Inspector General of Police came out, you know, a few weeks ago to make a, a, a statement that um, they will not allow governors of, of states to prevent 
opposition parties, you know, from carrying out their constitutional, you know, rights to, to campaign and reach out to the people of Nigeria. Unfortunately for us, you know, that seemed to be a word of mouth because uh, we have seen time and time again when, you know, instructions will be given and then they are not, when they are not backed by law and, you know, decisive actions, those words become mere words of mouth, like that which uh, the Inspector General of Police had said. And the reason I'm saying this is because before they came out to say what they said, they knew that there was a problem. In fact, River State was the flashpoint that even necessitated uh, that a statement by the Inspector General of Police. But have, what have they done you know, to ensure that these are not where words of mouth? What have they done to ensure that in River State today, opposition parties can actually go about their activities? Nothing. And I tell you something, Kofi. River State has never had it this bad. You know, while, while, while we were you know, chatting before this program, Nabo said that uh, what we have in River State is worse than the military dictatorship of Sani Abacha. And that's the truth. In River State today, we have a governor who goes around to tell the whole world how his Mr. project, how he is good, he's this and that. But the people of River State are dying. As I speak to you today in River State, there is no social program that has been carried out by this administration for the last seven years to ensure that the plight and pains of River people are reduced. As I speak to you today, what we have here is a situation whereby the governor right wake, wakes up in the morning and then takes any decision he wants, and you have a, 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 a convergence of people, you know, who have lost the very essence for which they were elected as assembly member, who endorse whatever he wants, and then he carries on as if we are in a military dictatorship. That is the situation that we are in. And it has even gone worse than this because right now, if you see what is happening, in fact, if, if your eye, if your ears are, are, are down to the ground. To what is happening in River State. You discover that yesterday, a day before yesterday, there even there was an attempted murder on one of the supporters of Atiku Abubakar in River State here. And this thing has been happening systematically, you know, time and time again since the governor of River State lost the election. And what we are saying as civil society organization is that you must endeavor to allow the civic space to be free. You must ensure to, to allow the democratic tenets to be, to, 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 to be practiced in our state. But what we have seen is far from that. And I, I, and I, and I, and I, I, I don't want to miss what, what when, when, when I say that the governor of River State today has turned River State into you know, a, a, a military state, a police state, and he is now serving us. You know, the military dictator of people. Well, well uh, Today, Solomon, speak, the let's, let's get back to Nkotaria. Uh, let's get back to Nkotaria. Upanabo Nkotaria, are you still with us? Uh, where would I go? I'm here with this. But so we already know um, that it's against the law uh, for state government to prevent any political party from campaigning at this particular period. Uh, if you want to make reference to the Constitution, or I mean the Electoral Act, Section 95, Subsection 2 of that Act, 2022. But I I'd like to ask, is there an impunitive, you know, are there impunitive measures? Paraventure, you have state governors contravening. Now, if there are impunitive measures, what happens to, um, you know, the impunity as well? I'm talking about punitive measures, right? Like, so what also happens like, to the fact like, that, you know, these governors like, also have like, impunity. Like, so I'm asking, how know, do we... Mercy, mercy, you know, understand, you shouldn't have me time now. So let me really respond. I think I can agree from what the questions you asked of last time. Like, like, uh, uh, so what I said, you know, the truth is, what we have as synonymous or normal with the the federal government, high blood pressure of the certain presidents and an enemy of concrete performance. You have said, first, let me go into what you talked about the attack. The River State Commission of Police is compromised. I'll say this on that. It's compromised because Lee Never, as the leader is very talking about, see the Lee Never, called the IG, called the uh, CP. My life is in danger. 
They sent only, there is not even a spot, there is a guy who sent only two policemen. If a man's life is in danger, are you going to send those two policemen to contain the situation? Only for the city to call up later to say that it was Tejmanit, my dear neighbor. How ridiculous. What are the facts? He's highly compromised. Highly compromised. And you don't expect a man of that caliber or a man of such a despicable character to go ahead and implement the electoral act or implement the provisions of the constitution. It's not possible. I will say this, talking about the punitive measures. The governor has impunity. And so you cannot be sued while in office. Of course, post office you can be sued on criminal matters. But you cannot be sued while in office. And that is why it is incumbent on the city acting at the behest of the IG to ensure that the electoral act, the project electoral act, are complied with strictly. If the governor gets up in the morning, we had a case like that, the Imbus case, who was a city in River State in 2014. If the governor gets up to say, Mr. City, I want you to do this. The people say, no, sir, we cannot. Because it contravenes the electoral act, it contravenes the constitution. The city will, is answerable. The government are titular security chiefs. The CP is answerable to the IG, who is answerable to the president. Therefore, the CP can say to the governor, when he knows that what the governor is doing is illegal and illegitimate, to say, no, I will not. And that is when you can have semblance of sanity in the society. Sadly, this very commissioner of police, I don't know his name, is not. He has been compromised. I will say this. He has been compromised. Therefore, now, if you talk of impunity, the government can go ahead with impunity because he has immunity. That's why a lot of people say, scrap this immunity because it has been abused. Because he has immunity, he can go ahead with impunity. No doubt about that. But he, the, the, the responsibility is on the CP. And that's why we should focus on the CP and the IG. And the president cannot be absorbed completely from all this. The president watches television even as we are talking. Yeah, well, but so, well, 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 please, please permit me to ask. Yeah, please permit me to ask Solomon just a, a very so quick one. We have to go. Yes, I know. Solomon, Solomon. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is that you, you, you feel the commissioner of police is compromised, Solomon. Um, um, so far, we hear that one party, political party, has been threatened uh, that they're going to seal the offices. Um, of this part. I wish we had more time. Yes. Yes. So, so is, 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 is. I want to quickly ask a question. No, could you please? Let me quickly ask a question. Yeah, we're out of question. time. Which place in the whole of River State is not a residential or business area? But, yeah, but the thing is, is the maybe the government is just trying to sanitize, sanitize to now do, because they said they've been thinking about doing it for some years, but they really hadn't done it. So now is when the, the government so wants to when, make sure that so if, you if, your, if your building is approved is as a residential is building, is it, is, is, a, is it too late to do the right thing, Mr. Solomon and Nicotera? That's the question we do. Is it too late to do the right thing? Now they want to, you know, before elections, okay, if your building is meant for commercial purposes, you can do that. If your building is meant for residential purposes, don't turn it into a political party secretary. Don't turn it into a hotel. Don't turn it into a school. So, so is it too late to do the right thing? <laughs> All right, Solomon, Solomon and Open up. we have to go. We have to go. We have to go. Th thank you very much. <laughs> We're out of time, right? Yes, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we need to do a part two. This should be a full art topic because there's a lot going on in River State and there's a lot of questions we have to ask you and I'm sure... We have, we a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Solomon Leno, uh, spokesman, River State Civil Society Organizations, Open Abuja, Kotaria, Public Affairs Analyst and Politician. Thank you very much for your time. Um, you are saying they have uh, Hitler, Hitler in River State. I don't know. Thank you. We'll talk some more. I hope that um, there will not be an executive order on you, both of you, after now. <laughs> we'll take a break. When we return, we'll talk some more. Mercy, what do we have next? We'll talk sports when we return. Yeah. <laughs>